Hey guys, John Luxa here, back with our blind playthrough of the Silver Case. The Silver Case. Oh. Yeah, it's not so bad. That's a little bit loud on my end, but it's alright. Alright, so Henna, 28%. Load game N3, yes. Maybe that's maybe that's too quiet now. Oh no, don't don't go, Jack. Where are you going? Oh. Alright. I guess he doesn't like me leaning on him. It's understandable. All right, so last time we left off, we were part of the way through Hana. Um, I think we were just about to get to the point where, or we just hit the point where Koichi and John had their, not really a confrontation, but where he remembered what happened. He remembered that, uh, Hikaru had died. So I'm not quite sure where where this goes from here. Tokyo has been going to the bar. He's been talking to uh, the bartender. I assume the knife is made out of paper. And he's whittling with that for some reason. But he has another knife that he's using to cut the paper knife. Or not? I I don't know. Unless it's actually like a letter opener that he's just sharpening. That's a possibility. Alright. From Erika to Tokyo, subject Koichi. I waited at the agreed place today, but Koichi never came. So I thought about what you said. Then I went to speak with his elementary school teacher and his mom. His teacher was Miss Kitajima, about 30 years old. She didn't look like she'd be popular among students, but she does seem to be the type who gets her job done properly. According to her, Koichi is a regular kid with a re regular sense of right and wrong, who plays regularly and who isn't very good at his studies. He sometimes looks rather smart, but there you go. Anyway, he's pretty far from the center of attention in class and is somewhat of an outsider, but he has his own strengths. Apparently, <coughs> <coughs> sweet baby Jesus, but apparently he has his own strengths. Apparently, excuse me, by the way, my allergies are awful lately. Uh, apparently Hikaru was even worse at his studies. It's been like like a couple weeks where it's just been like rainy and humid and all the I'm allergic to mold among other things, but but it's just been bad. Uh, let's see. Apparently Hikaru was even worse at his studies, and it looks like he was bullied as well. Koichi was really close with Hikaru and was always standing up for him. I was lucky to be able to meet with his mom. She works as a hostess. But she seemed really proper and respectable, and she seems like maybe she was just a regular cook or something, who also happened to be a hostess. I know I switched the words, but it's cool. She didn't give a bad impression at all. Koichi has been living alone with his mom ever since he was three. His parents divorced early, but apparently that doesn't bother Koichi at all. Apparently he's never even met his father. I mean, he probably doesn't remember him. With that, I didn't feel it necessary to think about Koichi any differently. I still think that he's a really good kid. I didn't get to see I didn't get to go see his secret base today, but still. Send. To Erica. I understand a lot more now. That'll do. I don't think you need to approach Koichi anymore. The investigation is over. Thanks. No, it's not. I'll contact you again if anything comes up. Also, I'll pay your fee, of course. Talk to the turtle. That'll probably advance things. So, this John guy. So that's what's up with him. Do you get it? No. You look happy. I feel happy. Thank you. I know he's talking to the turtle. Morishima Memo. Hmm. 
I picked up some pineapple juice on the way home. With all the panic buying and stuff. I don't know why. If you need canned fruit, pineapple is there. People don't want pineapple for, or at least where I am. People don't want pineapple for some reason. Uh, but I picked up some pineapple juice because the rum that I'm drinking is uh, harsh. It's, it's harsh. And uh, this makes it a little bit more palatable. You can still taste it, but it's not its not quite as bad. But it does have a kick. I am... I mean, I guess if you're going to make it... I guess if it's not going to taste good, you make it strong. And this is strong. So... I might have to pause this recording and, and go get some. Some more. We'll see. The truth and facts don't matter. I need to work out the core of this stuff. If I can just find that, at least I can avoid choosing the wrong path. I'm gonna assume that he's talking about himself and that's not some kind of little hint that there's multiple endings to the game. I learned that when I first started doing this. I didn't have any idea what it meant, but I kind of do now. If you just try and push through, stuff will work out somehow. There was a reason why I was worried about John, and why I was avoiding him. When I felt the remnants of that woman's thoughts at Babylon, John was beside me. So John became a sort of catalyst, and I felt like it was, it was his fault I felt that fear, and I secretly harbored those thoughts all this time, subconsciously. When I heard that John was the survivor of that security force group, something finally clicked inside my head, and the puzzle pieces all came together. To Slash. Who's Slash? About the Bat. You ever heard of a guy called the Bat? On April 15th at around 2 p.m., I entered the Skulba chat room and locked it, and suddenly someone broke in. I'm attaching the log. It was probably a hacker or a cracker. Can you dig up who this guy is? At the very least, I'd like to get his mail address. This is a job request. I heard that you were the guy to go to for stuff like this. If you need any other data apart from the log, I'll provide whatever I can. I'll be waiting for your reply. Interesting. My fee is one billion dollars. Uh, just one more time. Okay, that's it. Like they're just yanking on the door. What the? July 6th, Tuesday. Tokyo's room. 2.26 p.m. So this guy doesn't always... Well, he does. He leaves his apartment enough. I gotta ask my buddy if, um, anything's gone on with him due to some of the lockdowns and stuff. They're starting to implement lockdowns where I am. Not quite yet, but, you know, and he, uh, he's a chef. He teaches a cooking class at, um, at one of the, like, higher-end stores. You know, like a grocery store, but, like, the higher-end ones, um... So he teaches a cooking class, but I'm I'm curious if they've uh, you know stopped that for now. He recently, uh, I guess he picked it up from like a, a bargain bin or something. One of the uh, one of the EDF games, 4.1, which is pretty awesome if you haven't played it. I it, it's a little grindy, but it's it, and the graphics aren't great. Let's let's be fair. They look like PS2 graphics, but that's not the point. The point is, it's fun as hell. And I think they do that on purpose. They make the graphics low so that they can have, like, five million ants all coming at you at once. The Daily Word. Honey in the mouth, sword in the gut. Things that taste sweet to the mouth may not necessarily be good for the stomach. Indeed. Also, maybe it's just me, but I feel like the wing divers were way more fun to play in 4.1. And then in 5, I go in expecting it, and at every weapon they have is like a, a weapon you have to charge. And I'm just like, that sucks. It takes all the fun out of it. 
I can't just shoot. I have to, like, charge the weapon. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hello? Moshi Moshi? That must be Erica. She looks different, though, again. Ah. I was waiting at the agreed place yesterday. Again? Fucking Christ. Yeah, and that Koichi kid showed up and handed me a letter without saying anything. I stuck it in your mailbox, so later on when you get the chance, take a look at it. Is it a love letter? A letter? Okay. Hold on. Fuck. In the fucking mailbox. Is that down on the first floor? Here it is. Hello? I brought it over. Hello? Hey, Erica. Oh. Bitch hung up. God damn it. Passing me this kind of shit. Well, are we gonna read the letter? Let's see if red. Let's try the telephone again. No. Oh, I guess we'll... Yeah, we'll just try the window. Just for OCD. I don't think I actually have OCD, but, you know, just for completionist's sake. Oh my god. It's in Japanese. Dear Big Sis. Thanks for playing with me, but I can't play with you anymore. I remembered. Hikaru getting killed... And killing the guy who killed Hikaru, I killed the guy. You're such a good person, but you looked lonely, so I decided to hang out with you. You sort of reminded me of Hikaru. But there are lots of lonely people, so I can't spend time with all of them. That's true. Also, you smelled really nice, so I wanted to play with you a bit more. <laughs> Um, you know, he's he's pure. He's not like me that's all corrupted. Oh, hey, Manny. Manny's also pure. Manny's pure. If he lays down on my lap, I'm not going to be able to get up in the middle of this recording and, and get more alcohol. And then what will I do? But if you, if you take my cocktail fruit today, then you'll take it every day, and I won't get my vitamins. Right, Manny? Are you gonna lay down? Okay, good kitten. You're so cute. You. He and I made eye contact. All right. I'm sorry I couldn't go yesterday. Take care. Right, Manny? Morishima Memo. Because of my personality, while I acknowledge his purity, I can't accept that what he did couldn't have been helped. Not now, or ever. Everyone feels like killing sometimes, especially in that situation. Adults, kids, old people, men, women. Whether you actually kill someone or you're able to avoid it, that's a different story. Private citizens are expected to choose not to kill. That's how it is standing on the side of the system. Someone incapable kills a person. The killer is then automatically expected to be punished because of their inability to not kill. That's an interesting way of looking at it. Right, Manny? So this kid was lacking in his ability to not kill. But in his case, his purity was the trigger. That's something that's specific to these times. But is that true? Isn't the desire to kill also originally born from pure feelings? Some people need killing, though. It's just how it is. That's why I don't think that it couldn't have been helped. Koichi's feelings for Hikaru were pure and brutal. And Koichi's killing of the guy who killed Hikaru also came from pure and brutal feelings. 
I wonder what John thinks. Inohana, contact request. What's up with the Kamui investigation? Send a report on Kamui's past and the recent movements of the HC unit. I was contacted. What, is, what does that mean? Shut the fuck up. Let's talk to my turtle. When I was a kid, what kind of kid was I? Hey, Red. When you were a kid... Wait, how old are you? Hey, Red. Hey. Hey, dude. So that's Hikaru and Koichi, I guess. And the frogs. And the frogs. They showed a frog. Hana, Tsuki is coming soon. Tsuki, I believe, is Moon. True faith. It has been... How long has it been since I took Japanese? Like... A long time. I'm surprised I remember as much as I do, to be quite honest. Film window. Save game, yes. Achievement unlocked, flower. There you go. Hana. Hana, 35%. See, that makes me feel good. Only 65% more to go of the game. So we're almost halfway there. Two more chapters will get us to the halfway point. Maybe. All right. Transmitter Parade. We've heard this song before. A couple times. Chapter three, Parade. You're so cute, Manny. Oh, this is different. What is this? Is this an ammunition factory? Twenty years ago, they spent a lot of money making this. Parade. Right? Like, maybe that's the parade. Okay. Not, uh... Not like an actual parade, but like a parade of... What is this? This is like some clown shit. A princess and... And what do we have? Crosswords killed? Marble and... Begin something... I can't read it fast enough, but... Unauthorized... Picking random words. I mean, it's probably meaningless. It probably just looks cool. A princess and three. Is that Hikaru again? A princess and three young boys. Memories. The clouds. No, that's a girl, I think. Turned black. A princess and three young boys' memories turned black. And the village died off. Oh, wow, anime. Afterward, the nightmare eating chimera disappears with the wind. This, it was something like this right before. The last chapter, too, or, uh, spec Spectrum? Where we, uh, found out about the, the guy that died and, and other stuff, right? Oh, Manny. See, this is very artsy, but I don't mind. It makes it interesting. Okay, that's definitely a girl. And you know what? That is very Xenosaga-esque. That anime, that, how the animation was done right there. Just reminded me of it. And that, well, plus the, the, 
you know, anime merged with, uh, you know, 3D, or, well, computer graphics. July 11th, 1999, Sunday. Expensive housing area. Are they still on the stakeout? 9.51 p.m. Yes, they are. There goes Jack. Hey, Tetsu, do you like fantasy? I think I would go fucking crazy if I was on a stakeout in a single car with a dude probably for 12 hours a day every day for like two weeks. I would just go crazy anyway. Who says I'm not crazy now? Hmm? <laughs> hey Tetsu, do you like fantasy? Where the hell did that come from? It's a type of fable or myth. A, st a story you can lose yourself in. I don't like kids shit like that. I'm not interested. I bet. Then don't ask. Well, there's this one nice story. I don't give a shit. At a time like this... But this is just the right time for this kind of thing, isn't it? When boring shit gets piled on top of more boring shit, what happens? I'm gonna die. Seriously. Just keel over and die. That stuff makes my brain itch. Makes me want to scratch it out with a fork. Come on, just listen. Sorry, I'm going to sleep. That's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and talk. Sounds like a great lullaby. You know, recently, some people say fantasy is like brainwashing. Giving kids sweet dreams for the purpose of controlling them. That's... maybe. When you put it that way, that sounds right. Originally, there were pretty messed up stories. Fairy tales? Fairy tales. They were. I mean, they were. Like, if... If you can... Um... I, it was a while ago, but there was... There was like a, a comic compilation of like the grim fairy tales like someone took the fairy tales and like drew comics for all of them and they're dark they're like people getting dismembered and stuff it's not the you know Hansel and Gretel they throw the witch into the oven and she wants to eat children and stuff like that right so it's it's legit it's not sanitized for Disney or whatever so um this was like a comic for adults right I mean, there's no sex in it, but lots of gore and stuff. Kind of like the original Ninja Turtles. Uh, but it was it was awesome. So if you get a chance, maybe your local library has it. It's like a compilation of all these Grimm's Fairy Tales comics. It was probably, you know, an inch thick. It's awesome. It's all like black and white. It's It's great. It's great. Like, messed up how? Realistic stories without all the happy stuff. Most of them aren't happy. I would say none of them are happy. Well, that sure sucks. That's why they got turned into happier stories. Is that all? No, here's where it starts. So anyways, when I was a kid, there was this fairy tale I heard. It's an old folk tale from my hometown, but... Hmm. Once upon a time, there was a princess. Yep, just curl up, Manny. You are super cute. There we go. Oh, yeah. A beautiful princess. A terrible giant serpent fell in love with her. The serpent ruled the land. No, he had taken over the land. He invaded it? Yeah. The serpent turned the king into stone. The greedy serpent wanted the princess. So he took her away. Pretty standard shit. Go on, go on. Then came a band of heroes. To rescue the princess, they ventured to the huge castle. Well, of course. I'd do the same thing. The heroes combined their powers and fought the serpent. And then... What happened? They defeated it. 
I think I know where this is going. And then the heroes fought amongst themselves. Fuck yeah. Everything was fine and good. <coughs> right, Manny? Is that the end? Well, mostly. What the fuck? That's just a normal ass fairy tale. That sucked. You liked it, right? <laughs> no, that's no good. There's no twist. It's not over yet. What? Think of the story I just told you. It's been tweaked to make it nice. The realistic parts have been obfuscated. Or confused, right? Or hidden. Well then, what the hell happens? The princess was dead. What the fuck? What do you mean? She was killed by the serpent. Man, fuck that serpent. He's really getting into it. The fuck kind of story is that? And one more thing. There is no serpent. No? Why not? That stuff comes up in stories all the time. Of course there isn't. There's no such thing as a giant serpent. Well, yeah. It wasn't a serpent, but a human. Tomatoes. That's the word that just showed up. The heroes were people, too. Humans killed another human for revenge. That's just a crime. Yeah. Fairy tales are crimes. The unrealistic fantasy that happens in real life is crime. Tetsu. Huh? I have a question. If it was you, the heroes who got revenge, what would you do? What would I do? I wouldn't do shit. Why? They killed someone. Well, they did murder someone, yeah. There's no differentiation in crime. It doesn't matter what kind of reasons they had. Yeah, I agree. Right? That's how it is. That's the only way it can be. Tetsu. Huh. You can go to sleep. You're sharp. John and I will keep watch. Am I there too? Sorry, I'm tired. From that story. It's not a very pleasant story, is it? Yawn. Tetsu. He's asleep. It's time. John, time for patrol. Go look around. Let me know if you see anyone suspicious. Got it? Go straight. Oh, it's all in black and white. So, that's the thing, right? Is like... Justice used to be that if you killed somebody, they would kill you, right? Um, I don't remember who it was. Someone told me a story about, um, I think when he was a kid, the town they were in. I mean, who knows? Who knows really? But it was... Uh, What was it? It was like a village, and uh, the man's wife disappeared. And, you know, she'd always go in, and her friends didn't know where she was, and, you know, this is... He was a older guy, so when he was a kid was, you know, a while ago. But... And this was out in the country, I think, too. Uh... It was like a farm, and so they go to the, the guy, and they're like, where's the wife? And he's like, I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know. She went off somewhere. I don't know. She's been missing for a while. So he was chopping wood, getting ready for the winter or something. I'm not... I don't remember all the details, but... So they're like, we think he killed her. We think he killed her, and he must have buried her on his farm somewhere. So they dug up, like... This is the whole town that went there. And they dug up, like, his whole farm and checked everywhere, and they couldn't find her body. And so they're like, 
You know what? There is one place we haven't checked. He's been cutting wood all day. We didn't check under the wood pile. So they move the wood pile, check under it, dig her up. Man killed his wife, buried her under the wood pile. So they're like, all right, time for justice. They grabbed a rope, strung him up on a tree, just like that. It's like, you know, why do I have cat hair always in my mouth? I don't understand it. But that's justice, right? It's like you kill people. It's like we put dogs that attack humans. We put them down, right? But humans are somehow exempt. They're special. It's like, maybe not. Maybe they shouldn't be. The problem, and this is, I think, what people get confused, is that the way our justice system is set up is that it's supposed to be that you prove a person did it. That way it's not, that way you don't have vigilantism, right? You don't have someone going after someone else for, for whatever. It's supposed to be proof-based. A third party is supposed to observe and, and judge, right? Um, but in that case, it's like, this is like the Wild West, sort of like, it's the town. They're like, no one else is here. No one else has seen her. You know, we found her on your property under where you were doing the wood. You're done. It's It was you. You clearly hid the body. You know, so that's... I mean, in the Wild West, that's how it was. I don't think this was a Wild West thing. It was, he wasn't that old. You know, but... Go straight. Ooh, even the menu's in black and white. Interesting. Alright, do I have any implements? No, I feel like that's a waste of a menu. Wife. Oh, that must be the car. Okay, go straight. Oh, it's all the way. I'm just walking out here. What are we staking out? Turn left. The Yukimura Mansion is up the hill. So we're watching this mansion. Do they not know that we're watching them? The Yukimura Mansion is on the left. Contact it. Residents, we're gonna peep through the windows. Looks like nothing's wrong. Let's check the other side. Go up over the hill. Okay. So they've been doing a stakeout for 11 days or something. And yet I'm out here getting out of the car, walking around the outside of the house that we're watching. That seems dumb. Left turn, John. Well, I don't have any other. Oh, it won't even let me go back. I have to go this way. I'm a puppet. Maybe it's Sumio. Maybe he's the bad guy. Everyone's a bad guy. It's like the thing where the whole thing, the whole point of the, the movie is paranoia. The original thing, the uh, John Carpenter one. You get it, don't you? Go down the hill. There we are. Once more, contact. No problem. Nothing out of the ordinary. Okay, get back to the car. We're going downhill. Still doing okay. We have time for a little bit more story and then we'll have to stop, I think. And then I'll get more booze. Left turn, motherfucker. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately, I have to record a few more episodes just because it's like... Uh, 
I don't have any ahead of time. And I, I don't, I do call to the point where I can't record an episode a day. There's just some days that I can't. So I have to record a couple episodes on the days that I'm free, that I'm not working long hours and stuff. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Nice work. Like I'm going to be working all weekend. They, uh, I, I think I mentioned in the last episode, but they're not shutting down. All these other places are going on lockdown and stuff. They're like, no, no, we're not doing that. We're, uh, we're going to operate as normal. We had some freaking, someone, someone died today, but, uh, one of the patients, but they, uh, it was like an emergency thing. They pulled him down and, but before that, the nurses that were taking care of the patient, they're like, oh yeah, you know, patient has a fever, a cough, all this, like all the signs of the coronavirus. And it's like, well, are, are you wearing a mask? Oh no, they're, you know, the test, we sent the test off, but it hasn't been confirmed that they have it yet. It's like, well, that would be too late. You'd already be exposed once you found out that, you know, putting a mask on when you've been helping the patient or taking care of them for a day or two or, or whatever, you know, you've already been exposed then. That's too late to put a mask on. It's like people, man. And then they coded the whole, you know, the... Uh, you know, they had to do CPR, and so you have all these people rushing into the room, and it's like, are they all exposed now? I, I don't know. I guess, I hope not. I hope not. I guess we'll see. They've been pretty good about if people meet the criteria, then they shove them in the isolation room. Uh, but this was an emergency, so who knows? Nice work. Get in the car. Hmm? I mean, I'm going to... As long as I'm healthy, I'm going to keep making these videos. If I get sick, obviously, I'm going to probably take a couple weeks off. But, uh, you know, it's just like, it's just the, it's that, that, that stupid stuff. People being dumb is going to get other, that's, that's why the lockdown's in place. Or that's why their things are getting locked down. It's not, it's to prevent the spread of the illness or slow it down at least, you know. What? Tetsu? Huh? What the hell's wrong with you? That... What? That! The hell are you talking about? It flashed. It did. What flashed? So the house just freaking explodes. Sumio. Yeah? It exploded. Yeah. What do we do? About what? This scene. Scene? I'm asking what you're gonna do. I mean, nothing? Burn it in. This scene here, burn it into your eyeballs. Don't ever forget it. I won't forget it. Ever. Why? Why do they have to burn it into the eyeballs? Even this is in black and white? Is the whole chapter going to be black and white? What do you think, Manny? Sorry. It's okay. Tetsu, it was me. It's my responsibility. Well... I'm sorry. Exactly. It's not my fault. It's yours. What the? It's fine, it's the truth. Yeah, it is. It's Sumio's responsibility. Are you serious? Serious as a heart attack. You asshole. Listen up, Sumio. This kind of thing... You clean this shit up. You're gonna settle this case. Tetsu. Everyone please gather at HQ. Sakaguchi, the advisor from Central, is going to explain the situation. Who's Sakaguchi? Sumio? Conference room. Investigation headquarters. 
John, watch closely. Those are the guys from Central. A group of expert criminal investigators. But these days, traditional crime rates have dropped and things just aren't done their way anymore. Right, Manny? They're basically a band apart from everyone else. This case is comparatively close to an orthodox kidnapping. So these guys showed up. Sumio, keep quiet. You don't know when the same thing will happen to you. If crime changes, investigations change too. It's stupid to assume that all the old ways are somehow inferior. He's right. Am I wrong? Sorry. Well, it'll be interesting to see how far Afro goes. This will be something to watch. It's starting. Hello, everyone. That must be Afro. Okay. I'm Sakaguchi, Central Police Crime Investigation Advisor. There's something I'd like to get straight. Anyone referring to me as Afro will be dealt with immediately. Watch yourselves. You hear that? He's really into it. That's enough pleasantries, let's get down to business. Two months ago, a note appearing to announce a crime was sent to the Yukimura Zaibatsu. Zaibatsu's Yakuza, I believe. It was stuck inside a newspaper. It was a really crude note. The monkey laughs. There doesn't seem to be any deeper meaning to the text itself. It was found to be a code only understandable by Chairman Yukimura. At Central, we asked the Area 24 Precinct, who have jurisdiction, to watch over the Chairman's residence. Oh, so they're literally like guarding. That was the whole point. They were guarding the uh, place. You know, also, Sumio, I mean, I mean, so he probably did not have time to smuggle explosives into the residence, right? Um, but if, if I'm out walking around the mansion and uh, Tetsu was asleep, then Sumio was the only one potentially that could have done it. So, I, or, I mean, we were on just that one side, it's possible the other side was vulnerable the whole time. And as you know, although it was under watch, the chairman's house was blown up. He's looking at us. Maybe have more than two people on guard. What a dick. Being a dick is part of the course for Afro. <laughs> Thanks to inexperienced investigators, this case has entered into new territory. We haven't found any victims in the remnants of the explosion, and so we think it was purposely done while nobody was home. However, Chairman Yukimura has been missing since the day of the explosion, and so this case is now assumed to be a kidnapping. Oh. Finding Chairman Yukimura is our top priority along with finding the bomber. Each investigator is to follow Central's orders and carry out the investigation. The Yukimura Zaibatsu holds great influence over the national economy. I bet they do. Kidnapping the chairman of the Yukimura Zaibatsu is basically a crime against the national police. Everyone, on the name and honor of the Central Police, I need you all to put out your best to solve this case immediately and bring Chairman Yukimura back alive. That is all. Is that how... Oh, that must be Afro? It's been a while, Kotobuki. Yeah. Kotobuki is the boss, right? How's your band of killers growing up? None of your goddamn business. I see you've scored a comfy position. Yeah, you too. Me? Oh yeah. Whatever you say, Kotobuki. You sound desperate. I am desperate. Keep laughing, Kotobuki. I'm on this. Whatever you have to say, I'm watching over this investigation personally. So I guess that's how corrupt this world's become if the Yakuza are... Maybe, I mean, maybe that's how Japan is. That it's sort of an open secret that the, uh, that the mafia basically controls things. I don't know. I'm watching over this investigation personally. Do whatever. I don't give a shit. 
Put a bookie. Nobody wants anything too overdone. You reap what you sow. Your dogs were always a bunch of pit bulls. Show them your ass and you'll get bitten. I'm warning you as a friend. You sure are a pleasant motherfucker. Just watch your back. Sakaguchi. A video from the perpetrator. It's here. Play it immediately. Okay, that's a blow-up doll. Why the sound of dripping water? Or is that the chair? Is this it? Yes, that is all. What was their purpose? What do they want? What the hell does this video even mean? From the video, we can confirm that Ch Chairman Yukimura is still alive. However, there's nothing about what the suspects want. Those motherfuckers. Sakaguchi. Yeah, why the blow-up doll? Tetsu. It's a greeting from the suspect. It's some grabby self-assertion. For what purpose? It'd be easier if we knew, but... What is it? These guys aren't after money. I assume that's Kusabi. He looks different every time they draw him. It's a little bit annoying. These guys aren't after money, Manny. Where are we going? Snow Tower. <sighs> Same day. Yukimura Zaibatsu HQ. 12.46 PM. Snow Tower. They're so cute. It's something big. The tower? I'm sure they're talking about the case. Smooth out my shirt a little bit. I mean, the tower's big too. Something huge. This isn't something that can be solved with huge actions. What do you mean? No meaning. But thanks to this, look at how many people have been hurt. Right there. What's up? No, it's nothing. This building just looks like a ghost or something. A ghost, huh? Maybe. A snow tower, first floor. Reception. Yeah, it's actually sort of calm. Real rich people don't do really flashy shit. Like build this building? That's why it doesn't stand out. The more it stands out, the more people know what you've got. It's true. I see. Also, it has sort of a sense of guilt. Somewhere in there. Hmm. Big dick. Quit fucking around. Let's go. Okay, let us save for the time being. Save over Spectrum. Parade. Yep, black and white or red and white. It's neat. Alright, guys. Well, that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to pick you up, Manny. Don't go. Don't go. I've got you. I've got you. Oh, my gosh. Don't go. Oh, no. You're so... Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh, baby. Stop squirming. Stop squirming. I want to hold you. All right. Uh, that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for your time and attention. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, yeah, any questions, comments, concerns, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, let me know. I do try and respond to everybody. I'm not, uh, I mean, I can be an asshole, but I try not to be unless, 
I'm gonna start, I think, adopting, um, if you watch Nick Rakita's videos, you're probably familiar with Ty Beard, the lawyer for Vic Mignogna. Um, uh, and, and Ty Beard has a saying, which I think I'm gonna steal and use, which is, I will treat you as well as you allow, well, now I've gone and butchered it, um, treat you as well as you allow me to be treated or something like that. Basically, like, if you're an asshole, I'm going to be an asshole back to you. Or treat you as well as you allow me to treat you or something like that. It's it's like I'm going to be nice to you as long as you're nice to me, but you start amping up the... You start being a dick, I'm going to be a dick back. So, that's... It's something, I think, you know that I need to put more into practice. It's not a, it's, it's not a huge deal, but it's like, some people can just be really nasty, you know? And, uh, it, now, now that said, it's not my intention to be nasty back to anybody, but I will, um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> look, if you're cool, I'll be cool back to you. That's that's basically it. If you're trying to be a dick, I might be a dick back. That's all. That's it. I'm not... My thing is, like, I don't want to get angry. You know, if if people's comments are making me angry, I've, I've lost. Or uh, or not lost as much as... It, sh it shouldn't bother me because... At, you know, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Like, mean shit that people say doesn't really matter a whole lot you know i take the comments whatever they are i look at them if they have criticism stuff and stuff i decide if the criticisms are worth uh doing anything about or acting on if if they're legit first off right like i have the this screen right i kind of shrunk the game a little bit so that i can put myself here and then maybe if i do chat because I don't want to cover the game up with my face. I hate that people do that sometimes. Like, they cover up life bars or, or whatever. And I'm like, I want the game to be, you know, unspoiled, unru uh, you know, uncovered, basically. Um, but, you know, someone complained about the format and they're like, I gave you a downvote because I had to stretch the, the image to fill my monitor. And I'm like, okay but I'm not going to do it. He's like, you can just put your, your camera over part of the image. And I'm like, but I'm not going to do that. You know, so it's like, you know, criticism and stuff, I'll listen to them. And, and by the way, if you do have them, please don't hesitate to share them because I want this channel to be the best that it can be, whether I'm, I mean, I'm kind of lazy too. So whether I actually do it now or drag my feet and do it later, uh, you know, I do, I do want to improve it, so... If you do have any criticisms... You know... Let me, let me hear it. I, I don't mind. I do want to improve. Um... But it's just like... You know, he's like, oh, I gave you just like because of this and this and that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm probably not going to change it, though. You know? It's like, this is, this is my intent probably not going to change it or something along those lines it wasn't it wasn't like you're an asshole blah 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 i'm just like this is how it is you know i'm not mad i'm just laying it out there you know you need to change this and this and that i'm like just no i'm not going to sorry sorry not sorry but you know that said, if you do have any comments, I know I say the same things all the time. Uh, but yeah, good, bad, negative, indifferent, whatever. I'm easy. Let me hear it. Oh, YouTube is doing this crap now where it's like, I don't know if they're intentionally doing it, but it's harder to find comments now. It's, um, if you do So if you put a comment and I respond to it, and then you reply, that's no longer considered a comment that I get notified about. 
it'll bury it down in the list unless I go specifically look for it, which is it's stupid. It's why why are you doing this? Let me know that someone posted another comment or responded to my comment. You know what I mean? It only lets me know about um, new comments, new original. Um, I don't know what you call it. If you post a comment on the video itself, not respond, not replying to someone else's comment. If you reply to someone else's comment, I think those don't get seen. Those don't get told to me. But you put a comment on the the video itself, and that's like the not as a reply to someone else. That's what I get told about. It's weird. It's <sighs> anyway. But don't let that stop you guys. I, I look. Um, we'll see if I don't. Uh, I just, I want to. I, hopefully I find all of them. Um, anyway, enough whining, I suppose. What is your guys' unique positive moment for today? For me, uh, it's actually the... Um, let's go with the, let's go with the cognac. Uh, I haven't drank any of it today. I drank some yesterday. It's pretty decent. It's a, it's like a, it's like a brandy, but not as sweet. So it's a, it's a hard liquor. And the cognac I got was, was decent. So I don't remember the name of it. That's, you know, just how it is. But, uh, it was good. It was good. And I've never had it before. I haven't, I think maybe had cognac once. Or maybe not, I don't remember, but this stuff was decent. So that's my unique positive moment. Hopefully your, your guys is just as good, if not better. Hopefully better, of course. And I hope to see you guys next time. Till then, guys, take care.